the revolution in computing has made it so that we no longer have uh, we no longer have a a notion that humans are these sort of isolated, self-determining, self-authoring, rational actors, mm -hmm. you know, which is like the the idea that dominated economics for like most of the last hundred years. And now what we have is that the human is sort of a bundle of different um, unconscious algorithms that are all like modular and connected and nested inside of each other. And that the human being is nested inside of a, a larger social order that is itself kind of an organism in its own right, but that it's it's sort of like a turtles all the way down of unconscious uh, algorithmic reactivity to each other. So like, you know, like we, you know, the, the sort of Blade Runner conclusion that you come to is that humans are robots and robots are people. Um, and you know, there's, that's a contentious philosophical claim, but like, but like, you know, the Buddha said as much, right? Like a lot of the, you know, the Eastern non-dual traditions are about how everything that we take for granted as, uh, the behavior of a, an organism that it's choosing what it does. If you inquire deeply enough into the nature of the mind, you realize that all of your choices are, are sort of mechanical responses to your conditioning. You know, that that's like, you know, karma is like a, you know, a, a, an impossibly complex network of mutual causation, you know? And so like, that's, that's kind of where, you know, the, uh, the tech world and, you know, revolutions in, in neuroscience and so on have taken us is like, you're no longer, a you know, to the extent that you're no longer an individual person now, right? You're you're a city made of cells. Some of those cells are human. Some of them are not. And and uh, there is a sense in which you, at the cellular level, um, all of your cells are individuals. They're just joined in this thing, and you are joined in this bigger thing. You right. know that we call society, which is a kind of super organism. And so, like, where we draw the lines around individuality uh, depend on how far away we're standing from a given phenomenon. Um, and so, you know, this, this notion that's, you know, going back to this, this stuff that Wilbur and, and Esper and Hargens worked on, like that's, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So like, there's a sense in which everything is individual and there's a sense in which it's uh, plural or, or collective. And so similarly, there's a sense in which free will there's a there's a stance you can look at where free will exists, and if you move, then it looks like everything is just sort of blindly, deterministically causing everything else. And you know the question of like uh, free will is a question about the the philosophical stance that we want to take on emergence. Like, is emergent behavior? something that actually exists or does it just appear to exist because some, you know, like we see order in a new way if we stand and look at it at the, at the behavior of the cosmos from a different perspective, you know? So I, I take all of this stuff as, uh, as like, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we can't know for sure because there are limits to our, knowledge and the knowability of things. And so it's like, well, we're probably better off assuming that it's both and that efforts to try and like pin down reality in one way or another, you know, saying like, oh, this is, you know, something is purely objective or purely subjective or choice does, does or does not exist. That these are, these are methodological artifacts, you know, like, <clears throat> are you a noun or are you a verb? Mm -hmm. You know, which one, which one, why does one have to be more true than the other? Anyway, that's a rant. Do you often take DMT? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, not in, I mean, you know, everybody's got their college years, but. Uh, How many times have you done it? Oh God. That's a good question. Not in a while. Is that, did, did, did you get into psychedelics after you were into the, all the paleontology stuff and did psychedelics sort of like catapult you into all this? Definitely part of it. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, the, the, you know, the, the question of the evolution of intelligence and consciousness mm -hmm. is hot on the heels of <laughs> realizing that you, uh, 
you, you that everything you thought you knew is up for grabs, right? You know, and you're like, okay, well, what is the mind and where does it come from? And, you know, how does language work? Yeah, and those are very, those are very undergraduate, uh, like, you know, you, you, yeah. So, but, uh, you know, the the older one gets, the cooler one, one's brain runs. And uh, the older little, one gets, the cooler well, one's brain runs? Well, I just mean like your earlier, earlier in life, your brain is, is a noisier object. Yes. You know, children are very like uh, distracted and playful and creative. And then yeah. uh, as you get older, uh, University of California, Berkeley, child psychologist Allison Gopnik calls this the explore exploit tension, where it's like as you get b- older in life uh, or as a system ages, yes. even um, those systems become more conservative and more risk averse. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and then uh, at some point, you can kind of go back. Um, let's see what I put this. There's, I wrote a piece on this a while ago. Uh, the future is noisy. Talking about like there's a curve in life uh, where as, as your senses start to fail you in, in old age, you become more childlike again. You become yeah. more, more of a dreamer and you know more playful. But uh, but yeah, there's so like the relationship. Wear diapers be- again. Yeah, like the, yeah, exactly. The, the relationship between... Um, like, you know, the notion that comes out of DMT research that, uh, that the basically waking state is a kind of dream constrained by the, 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 the wiring of the brain to its senses. And so like the, the more signal you get from the outside world, uh, the more your signal to noise ratio goes up. And then as your, as your senses develop, uh, or as they fail, that that ratio changes. And so like different, uh, you know, there are processes, like if you think about that kind of that arc, there are, there are moments in the process of this science, the production of scientific knowledge that are high noise. And then there are moments that, that, that are high signal, you know, like when you're collecting data, you want your noise to be as low as possible. But when you're trying to come up with a new hypothesis, you want to turn the noise up. And so again, this has to do with like the... Um, the way that, uh, you know, for instance, uh, you know, the people that are like authors talk about, you don't want to criticize your first draft while you're writing it. You want to save editing, which is a high signal to noise ratio process uh, for later. And then you want the original draft of your manuscript to be generated in a kind of sprint of noise production. Right, right. You know, um, so there's a really great uh, paper. There's an exchange of letters uh, on uh, the role of noise in in innovation in complex systems. Let's see. Yeah, the role of noise in collective intelligence where a uh, famous psychologist, Daniel Kahneman, basically says, you know, noise is the enemy. We're trying to get rid of noise. Um, and then, you know, his his, his critics, led by uh, David Krakauer and David Wolpert, say, yeah, actually, if you eradicate noise from a system, you lose all creativity in the system. It, you lose the ability for that system to adapt to uh, surprise in its environment. So I don't know if that answers your question, but there are definitely times in life where it's appropriate Perhaps, or it's more appropriate, you know, if you uh, to pursue trance and psychonautic adventure and lateral thinking and creative weirdness. Yeah, I think like the farther down the road we get in the advancement of technology, and you know, if we ever hit the point of, oh, I'm sure we will, but the point of like a singularity, we would maybe maybe humanity will just want to escape this reality that we are in right now like it's like the matrix right it's like we're unplugged right now and maybe uh like a certain a certain group of human population will just go like dive into psychedelics and just try to like dmtx themselves into that world for the rest of their lives and some people will join the machines 